So what is the best property strategy for you? Hello, my name is Mark Fitzgerald and it's great to have you joining me here today. So all the time, people are out there wondering what is the best strategy for me if I want to get started in property. And let's face it, there's a lot of people that want to get started in property, but they just don't know where to start. I was the same and realistically, I'm going to help you with how I got started uh, and why I looked at the best strategies for me. Now, a lot of you will be saying, well, I know what strategy you did. And a lot of you will be saying, I don't even know who you are, but I might have a little listen to this because it might help me. And I hope it does. But there are loads of different property strategies that you can do to build a successful property investing business. Now, first and foremost, you have to roll things right back to the beginning. Ask yourself, why am I getting involved in property in the first place? Do I want it as a side hustle where I maybe still have a full-time job and I just want to grow a portfolio of buy to lets, you know, of single lets, of just a few properties as a little nest egg, as a little legacy piece, just to park my money somewhere because I'll get a better return than I would in the banks. If that's the case, Maybe this video is not right for you, but if you want to delve deeper and you want to find out more about the different strategies and really help yourself to pick one, then this will help you. But that is fine. If you just want to have a side hustle, maybe have a handful of properties and just say to yourself, I've got five properties there. It's easy to manage. Give them to a letting agent or whatever. Happy days. Or do you want to be a property professional? Now, I'm not saying if you've got five properties, you're not a property professional, but a property professional for me is somebody that has it as a business and runs it as a business as well. And make sure that it's successful, that it's cash flowing, that it's making a profit, because at the end of the day, otherwise all you're doing is investing in a load of liabilities. So the different strategies that you can be looking at, of course, are rent to rent, deal sourcing, purchase lease options, flipping properties, commercial conversion, social housing, serviced accommodation. The list goes on and on, and there are more than that, of course. But those are just a few of the popular ones. Now, what I see and what I hear a lot of and people message me about all the time is, I'm gonna get into deal sourcing. Why? Because somebody said to them, well, it's relatively easy getting into deal sourcing. In our heads, we can think, well, all I gotta do is find a property, find somebody that wants to buy it, happy days, I get paid. And a lot of people are out there selling you a bit of a pipe dream on this because there's a hell of a lot more that goes into deal sourcing. Now, deal sourcing can be a very, very profitable business when done correctly and set up correctly. If you want to be compliant, you want to set yourself up in the right manner. I've done a video on this before and I'll do a few more as well to help you with that. A lot of people will say that's the quietest strategy that I can do potentially alongside a full-time job uh, and, and build up some cash and some funds. Now, there's pros and cons with all the different strategies, of course. But what I do say is you need to look at these before you start investing your time, your money uh, and anything else into a certain strategy, just because somebody said deal sourcing is easy. Now, deal sourcing is not easy. As I say, it is a great strategy, though. And in a way, as a property investor, we are all deal sources because what are we doing at the end of the day? We're finding deals. So no matter what sort of strategy you want to do, whether it's rent to rent, whether it's serviced accommodation, whether it's flipping properties, you are a deal sourcer in effect. So do have a look into that sort of thing because you may come across some deals that just aren't right deals for you. Maybe they're not in the right area. Maybe they're not quite stacking up the way that you'd like them to because maybe you haven't got the funds to do these deals right here, right now. Then they're great deals to be able to pass on, to be able to sell on. But as I say, make sure you're compliant when doing so. What a lot of people don't see with deal sourcing is the amount of work that is done and then the deal falls through. Maybe the investor pulls out, maybe the vendor pulls out, maybe the interest rates go up and the market is struggling because of mortgage rates and things. All of a sudden, you could be expecting a 3,000, 6,000, 10,000, 50,000 fee for doing all of this work and see it all fall through. Now, of course, you can look for a new investor, you can, you can potentially look for a new property and everything, but again, it's more work and you haven't been paid. So if you've waited three, four, five, six months for something to go through and it hasn't gone through, you're not getting paid. OK, well, you shouldn't be getting paid at the end of the day. Some people are deal sourcing that are trying to take payments as soon as somebody just says they're going to buy the deal. 
you need to be careful with that because at the end of the day that money should be in a client account subject to terms and conditions of it going through now if somebody pulls out and it's not your fault and you've got it in your terms and conditions and this is why it's important to be set up properly then of course you might be able to take say uh, a percentage you might even be able to keep that uh, that fee because obviously they've signed a document to say that they were going to buy it and they pulled out but again it's a slippery road to be down and a lot of the time people aren't looking at this they're just looking at i can sell a couple of deals make six thousand ten thousand pounds happy days i can sell one deal a month that replaces my wage and you can but it takes time to do okay it can take a lot of time to do. But again, go and get proper training, get set up properly. Don't just follow all the other sort of minions doing the same sort of things because they may not be doing them right. So make sure it's from people that are living, breathing and doing it and move on from there. Of course, another strategy which you can get into relatively low cost uh, and quickly is rent to rent, which I did and I did HMOs. Now you can do this with HMOs, you can do it with serviced accommodation uh, and I do both. But at the end of the day, they're very profitable. Now, I did HMOs initially because it was a faster cash flow. I needed money to come through quickly. I took voluntary redundancy and I only had six months of money to live on. So I had six months to get out there, make some deals happen and start bringing some money in. And I looked at serviced accommodation. It's very noisy. It's more profitable. Don't get me wrong. You will probably make more money doing serviced accommodation, but it can also take longer for your cash to start coming back okay so for me it was a case of with hmos houses of multiple occupation where you let the properties out on a room by room basis it was easy for me to get a hold of those properties offer a guaranteed rent to the landlord and then be able to put people into these rooms knowing that as soon as i put people into these rooms i'm making my money i know the cash flow that's coming through i can pretty much say each month as long as everything's going to plan this is the money that I will be making. Whereas obviously service accommodation can be seasonal, it can go up and down. Now, like I say, I do both, but I did the HMOs first, and now we do the service accommodation. Both strategies are brilliant. Both can be done with rent to rent, as well as other strategies as well. Uh, and we teach this and we train this. And we have the rent to rent business builder, which teaches you how to do rent to rent on HMOs. And we have the ultimate serviced accommodation business builder, which shows you how to do rent to rent along and with other strategies for serviced accommodation. So we have two different training platforms if you're interested in. Check them out at thepropertyunleashed.com. We also have a free 10 step serviced accommodation guide and a 10 step HMO rent to rent guide as well which you can download at thepropertyunleashed.com now as well as a free masterclass training but get yourself over there and have a look for yourself and let me carry on with this video equally to that you want to make sure that it's something that you want to do so when you're going back and you're thinking about all of this you're thinking what's the best strategy for me well okay maybe i want cash i want cash flow first i want the legacy piece I want to have a property portfolio. I want to have a, a retirement fund, a nest egg for the family, for the kids, but I need cash flow now. I want to get out of this job now. I want more time freedom, and that is something that's very, very important to me. So you want to be looking at cash flowing strategies. Now, cash flowing strategies are great, as again, deal sourcing is a cash flowing strategy, but it can be a bit hit and miss until you build up you know, trust with investors that you know are going to buy it, that you're finding good deals. Rent to rent, again, with HMOs is very, very good and very cost effective. You don't have to spend thousands and thousands of pounds. In fact, people are, well, are teaching this, but people who are teaching this have gone out there and spent thousands and thousands of pounds doing refurbs and doing properties up and stuff. And that's such the old way of doing things. Whereas, you know, I've never paid for a refurb on any of my properties. They've always been nicely done. I have painted some rooms and maybe changed the old carpet, but I've never paid for a massive refurb and I've never paid for a deposit either on any of my deals. And I wouldn't because it's a business to business agreement. And this is what I'm teaching you. And this is what I teach my students how to do as well is to negotiate the best deals. You know, some people say that training can be expensive and of course it can be, but it can never be taken away from you what you learn. And if it's good training and it gets you the knowledge, it will save you thousands and thousands of pounds in the long run. And that's what we're trying to do when we're helping people here and having a good, safe community for people to do this in. So you, you need to know what it is you want. So if you're looking for cash flow, you need to be going for a noisy strategy. Now, what's a noisy strategy? Well, 
rent to rent is a noisy strategy. Do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, whether you're doing serviced accommodation, whether you're doing HMOs, it's a noisy strategy. Deal sourcing is going to be time intensive. You're going to have to be out there doing viewings, finding investors, you know, making sure that you, you're negotiating deals, talking to agents. So it is going to be, again, another noisy strategy. And that's fine because we can build systems into businesses when they're making money. In the beginning, you wear all the hats. I wore all the hats, but you get stuck in there and you get going. Now, if you've already got a large or a, a pot of money, a large pot of money, um, then you can potentially just go out there and buy properties, do refurbs, add value. You can flip properties. But again, a lot of people getting into property don't have a lot of time and they're like, well, I'm gonna build up a portfolio and I'm gonna flip properties and then I'm gonna keep hold of them and rent them out. That's brilliant. But again, that can take time, okay? So just factor that in. I always say that you should look to try and do a couple of flips a year, which is where you buy a property, add value to the property, you either um, revalue it and keep it and rent it out for yourself, or you flip it and sell it on through estate agents or anything like that, or potentially even investors. But then you'll get a bit of a chunk of money. So if you do sell it on, you should be looking at making a chunk of money out of it. I look at those as little bonuses each year, but they're not cash flowing strategies. They don't put money in your pocket month on month. You might do one in six months and get that chunk of money. You might do one in another six months and get another chunk of money, but it's not guaranteed. And it can, if that's what you're relying on as a wage, be a little bit stressful if the market changes, you can't sell something, all of a sudden you've got bills to pay and you're running out of money. Don't put yourself in those situations unless you really, really want to. But of course, doing a bit of rent to rent, SA, HMOs, uh, and flipping at the same time is brilliant because one brings you in the cash flow and the other one brings you in the big chunks of cash as well and helps you to build that property portfolio that at the end of the day, what we all want. So if you were looking at doing a flip strategy, you wanna be looking to try and get hold of properties below market value. So you wanna be looking for motivated sellers. Now, right here, right now, I'm recording this, there's a lot of motivated sellers out there and it's only gonna get worse. It is now becoming a buyer's market. It was a seller's market for the last couple of years. There was a boom in the market and sellers could really hold out and let people you know, fight over their properties and sell them for maximum profit. Now that's changed. So it is gonna become a buyer's market. Now, if you're a cash buyer and you've got investors involved and you can potentially buy properties without even getting mortgages because of the high interest rates, you are in such a strong position that it's really, really good for you. And that's a position that you really wanna get yourself into anyway. No matter what you're doing, whether you're doing cash flow in businesses or whether you are going for long term, you wanna be trying to get into a state that when the market dips like this, and it will always go up and down and dip, it'll never stay the same. You want to be in a position where you potentially can be a cash buyer and do some flips. If you're going to do flips now, you can you can offer people that certainty. Motivated seller, we can buy this in quick time. We're not holding out, waiting for mortgages, waiting for bridging or anything like that. We can buy this property really, really quickly, as quickly as we can get the solicitors and the searches done. And then basically we can take this off your hands. You can then do the work on it. And then of course you can put it back on the market. You've added value. Yes, the market won't be booming, but there will still be people out there wanting to buy you know, residential properties for their families and potentially investors looking to get onto the market. But you'll find there's a lot more people are still gonna wanna buy homes to live in, even if it's not landlords or investors. So a lot of people, dismiss a lot of these strategies just plainly because they want to own the property and I, I, I totally agree with that if you can own the property own the property because you'll get not only the cash flow from the property but you'll get the capital growth as well that comes over time so it is worth you know if you can get hold of properties getting hold of them now myself I've, I've predominantly done rent to rent to get there I now own some properties some buy to lets myself and I do some PLOs purchase lease options, which is very much like rent to rent, but we have agreed a price to buy the property at a set time frame. And of course, I've done another video on purchase lease options as well. So if you have a little scroll down, you'll see it's probably about two videos down from this one, if you're on my page. But at the end of the day, that's another great little strategy or tool I like to call purchase lease options at all to be able to go in and do. And you don't need a great deal of money depending on the situation and the circumstances. So like with anything, as I always say, no matter what strategy it is you wanna do, the first and foremost thing when you're viewing a property or when you're talking to a vendor, a landlord or an agent is finding out what the problem is. What is the problem with that property? What is the situation? 
and what is potentially their problem and issue. And if we can solve it and we can obviously help them whilst making money ourselves and make it a win-win, that is what it's all about. But what I wanted to do really in this video was not to confuse you, but it was more about just making sure that you understand that you don't just have to do one strategy because somebody's telling you that's the best strategy. You've got no money, so you need to do deal sourcing. Um, my first rent to rent cost me 250 quid for some room dressing. Okay, after I had the contracts and everything done, which I give to my students now anyway as part of my training, so they don't even have to pay for that. It's all about just making sure that you've got the means to get there. Now, if my first deal had cost me a couple of grand, maybe to, to put furniture and stuff like that in, hey, you can do that on a credit card. As long as your numbers stack, and I'm not recommending you do it on a credit card, but I'm saying you can. Do you know what I mean? There isn't, you know, the only boundaries that are stopping you from actually taking action are you. Your mind is the thing that plays tricks on you. How do I know? Because I had this for years in the corporate world. I was stuck in a rut. I never wanted to rock the boat. I didn't want to lose my job because I thought, how do I survive if I lose my job? But you know what? As soon as I got out of my own way, as soon as I got out of my own head and I started taking action, I've seen that there's so many different ways that you can do deals in property. There's so many different ways that you can build businesses in property, but you just need to find the right one for you. Focus on it and then go and nail it. When I started in property, I was getting a lot of education from all over the place and I was going a bit like this at the beginning and it was my wife that said to me, Mark, focus on one thing, nail it, and then you can go out there and do whatever you like. And that's what we do now at the end of the day. So we have, we've nailed the rent to rent side of the business. We're now building up our own portfolio from the profits that we're making in our business. We're expanding that as well. And of course, we have the help and support there for you if you need it. So I hope this episode helps you. I hope it's given you some sort of uh, guideline or clarity to just go away and have a little think and see what makes you passionate. You know, we're all passionate about viewing properties and there's a good feel factor about going in and, and viewing houses and, and looking at things and, and putting in deals and making offers. But then it's the bare bones of the business afterwards. Do you know what I mean? So you may get the deals as a deal sourcer, but then maybe you don't like the fact that you've got to wait so long with uncertainty before you get paid. You may look at rent to rent and think HMOs. I like that. There's good cash flow there. But you know what? I don't want to deal with tenants. I don't want to deal with this. There's ways that once you've got a few properties in, you get yourself a little property manager person in there to deal with that for you. But if that doesn't get you going, then don't start down that road. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, I tell you, I prefer serviced accommodation. So maybe I could do some rent to rents, get some serviced accommodations up. I haven't got to deal with tenants or anything. We've got holiday makers and things like that, or we've, we've got contractors coming in. But over a time, I can get myself a virtual assistant who will be able to sort all of these systems out for me. And we'll just make sure that everything's tickety-boo once the cleaners are in, once the systems are in place. And we show everybody how to do that in the training, by the way. Um, then you'll know exactly how to streamline everything and make it all perfect for your circumstances. And of course, you can do social housing as well, where you get hold of a property, either you buy it or you could potentially do a JV with a landlord, but I would make sure that they know what's going on. And then you can lease that property three to five years with your local councils, with your local housing associations. Uh, they take on the responsibility. They put their own tenants in there. They pay you a guaranteed rent at the end of the day for, for, for using it. The wear and tear on the properties, can be quite high, so make sure if you're doing anything like that that you've got contracts that, you know, how you give them the property, they will make sure that they give it back to you in the same state to cover yourself because otherwise you could get a real rundown property. It's a lot more professional than it used to be. It used to be a little bit shaky around the edges whereas they do social housing and I heard stories, in fact I know landlords that have done social housing you know, the, the kitchen's been wrecked because somebody's kicked off and it's been down to them to actually replace those units and stuff because it's just not in the terms and conditions of the contract. Whereas they thought, well, if somebody damaged it, surely it's going to be down to them to replace things. So you just need to be mindful and careful with who you're working with and how you're doing it. But again, there's loads of different strategies out there. So make sure you're going out there, you're networking, you're getting out there, you're meeting people, you're talking to people, you're doing your homework and you're making sure that whatever strategy, whatever business you want to get into in property, it's the right business for you. As I say, if I can help you in any way, feel free to reach out to me on social medias, um, share this, 
leave a comment, let me know what you think and let me know if there's any other particular topics you'd like me to talk about and I shall do some videos, some podcasts and whatever else needs to happen to do so. You make sure you, you take care of yourself, you keep focusing on that vision As I've said in this video, make sure that vision is your vision, nobody else's. It's what you want to do because if it is and it drives you and you're passionate about it, you will succeed. You can't fail. You just need to be taking the actions to achieve your goals. Take care. Bye for now.